here we are with the Acer Aspire uh, E5. It's a 774G. I had to look because there's so many variants of this model. Last year's was the 773 and the 772G. So this is basically the 17 inch desktop replacement or multimedia laptop, laptop upgrade over and above uh, that version. Um, let me start off by saying 78% good score. This is a good all-rounder and there's absolutely nothing that's really, really a deal breaker here because the whole system seems to be very well balanced and they've done some improvements uh, over last year. First thing I want to do is just take you quickly around the ports. There's a couple of things to, to show you uh, over here. Uh, we've got fan output Kensington lock here. Now there's the USB-C uh, shaped port. It's actually a USB 3.1 Rev1 behind there. No Thunderbolt. Uh, so it is just a standard USB 3 port. Gig Ethernet, VGA, HDMI. No display port on this, uh, so you won't be able to run your 4K. 60 frames a second out of that. Only 30 frames a second out of that. Two USB 3.1s. On the other side, there's two USB 2 connectors and the power and the DVD multi-writer, not a Blu-ray multi-writer. So, uh, fairly standard set of ports, all positioned towards the front. So, if you are using it in an office space and you prefer the connectors to the back, that's a little bit awkward. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the keyboard. I'm just going to flash some of the specs up on the screen so that you can see that this is a, a U-series processor inside. So, that's dual core. Not a quad core system. This is a three kilogram system based on an ultrabook platform. So, tending towards more battery life rather than the sort of power that you might expect from a quad core in this size or weight of device. But they have got that DVD writer in there and uh, that's going to impact the battery life. I'll show you that uh, in a minute. Keyboard, not backlit, but reasonable. No major flex in the keyboard there. The touchpad is fine. It's a big keyboard area. Really no problems at all. The contrast on the keycaps is good and we didn't have a problem with that. This full HD screen is interesting. You can see it's a, a matte screen. It's, uh, I thought it was going to be an IPS panel. I opened it up, had a look. Reasonable viewing angles. It's actually a TFT panel. So the actual viewing an angles are not too bad. Now you'll see some inversion as I push that all the way back there and you'll see some color fading. But for uh, a TFT panel, really not too bad. There are our test results on the panel. Let me just run you through those if you're not familiar with things like CDM per meters squared. Well, this is the maximum brightness that we measured. 320 in the middle is quite good. 300 is a good figure. 320 is absolutely fine for indoor use and a certain amount of outdoor use, or at least by the window use. And by that, I mean on the train, by the window, uh, on the plane, by the window. Um, so not too bad. Deltas, so that's the variance between the color uh, and the real colors, is seven or more out of the box. It can be calibrated a bit, but that's not fantastic. But again, for this target audience of sort of general home multimedia or home office, office work where accurate colors are not that important, we're not talking about photography or videography here, that's actually not too bad. Contrast of 800 to 1 is quite good as well, so the black levels were good. The actual color space, the amount of colors it can show compared to the uh, sRGB standard is 95%, so that's okay as well. The screen is a lot better than last year's model, so Acer have done a good job upgrading that. Let's go back to that performance. Now we have got 8 gigs of RAM in here. Um, we've got that uh, graphics card as well, which we'll talk about in a minute, the GeForce uh, GTX 940MX, the latest version of the 940. Uh, about 15% faster than the 940M, if you've uh, got any references for the uh, 940M. Dual core Ultrabook platform. Now a lot of these systems are much the same. The SOCs are pretty much the same in all of them. Nothing special. This is a, a core i. This is the core i7 version, which is the 6500U. Um, the the performance figures are as you'd expect with any other device uh, around this. This is not quad core performance. There's the CPU multi 64 bit. How does that compare with others in the class? Well, there's the MSI. Like just. 10% above that. That's got um, the 7500U, so the slightly higher clocked um, and later generation of the uh, U series, and you'd expect that. That's 10% uh, more. The rest pretty much coming in plus minus 5% uh, on, on those scores. 
What does that translate to? That translates to reasonable office performance, spreadsheet performance, uh, PowerPoint smooth uh, display performance, um, a little bit of 1080p video editing, um, nothing too complex there, no 4K editing, wouldn't recommend that. Um, and in terms of gaming, well that really depends on the GeForce, I'm going to show details about that in a minute. One really nice aspect of this is the storage inside. One terabyte of spinning hard drive and 240 gigs of light on SSD. And you can access the back too, so you can swap those out. You could swap that terabyte drive out for a two terabyte or something like a terabyte SSD, a two and a half inch SSD as well. Uh, the SSD light on up to 520 uh, megabytes per second read speed, so that's pretty good. 4K read and write speeds, all acceptable there. So that allows you to shift files around quickly, allows programs to open up quickly. And that's really, really important for something like a two-year-old laptop. The difference between an SSD-based system and a, and a spinning hard drive system is vast. So investment in an SSD-based uh, system for the operating system, really worth the money. Talking about money, a thousand euros is the current price uh, for this. I don't find that too bad. This is an Ultrabook with the graphics, with the nice big uh, screen, which is a reasonable quality matte. Um, maybe the battery life. We'll look at the battery life in a minute. Uh, first, I wanted to look at the gaming performance. We've run a lot of tests. Sasha Malt, the reviewer for this device, a lot of gaming tests there. Let me just scroll through some of those. And what you'll see is green and red. Green is acceptable, red is not acceptable frame rate. So there's a lot of stuff on the older games there at the top, a lot of green, so you even get full HD resolution on the old uh, Tomb Raider. Raider. Go to the new Tomb Raider, which is a very heavy uh, game, 34.7 at low settings. Looking at some of the very, very new stuff, uh, No Man's Sky, for example, almost unplayable, just reaching 30 frames a second. So. Really, really nice. I, I uh, advise you to take a look at the, uh, the full review for some more details on GPU performance uh, because there's a lot of gaming tests that's been, that have been done there and it's really worth looking through some of those results. Right, let's get on to heat, noise and battery. So the E5 has been sitting here for a while and it hasn't generated any heat, it hasn't generated any noise, I'm not really putting it through uh, paces, of its paces of any sort. In our test lab, uh, we've got a noise level of up to 40 dBA. What does that mean? It means you're okay. It means it's not a very noisy uh, device. Uh, heat, looking at the heat map there, go to the full review for a really detailed look at the, the heat and where that heat appears. Maximum 48 on the underside, on the top 37.1. So again, in the acceptable area, those pinks are okay. You're not going to have any problem with that. Just underneath on that uh, side, left side here, going to get a little bit warm for you if you've got it on your lap and you're doing some sort of gaming. But remember, these are extreme uh, low test SSD, CPU and GPU, uh, so not uh, everyday usage tests. Loudspeakers are okay. And I want to go straight to the battery now because it's a 41 watt hour battery. Um, I'm just double checking that. Yes, 41 watt hour battery. And I was a little bit worried. This big screen, uh, we did a test at uh, 150 nits. So that's about um, acceptable uh, flight cabin, sort of office room uh, brightness. We got a reasonable uh, score out of that. 11 hours, 42 minutes is your idle. That's not a real world scenario, but look at the Wi-Fi serving test. A good five hours, five hours, 22 minutes out of that for Wi-Fi, and that's pretty good uh, for such a device. Okay, three kilos of device. You could get a nice 13 inch uh, device and a nice big external pack, battery pack for two kilograms and give yourself 10 hours of Wi-Fi, but you're not going to have this um, big screen uh, and this uh, nice comfortable uh, surface or working area there. So. If you're gaming, one hour, it always seems to be about the one hour to one hour, 30 minutes. That's how these things are calibrated. You just need to get one hour of battery life at it, and then the manufacturer seems to think it's acceptable. Um, but that's okay in terms of this being more an indoor device, multimedia, desktop, uh, dorm room device. Let's look at the overall uh, verdict. I just want to show you the pros and cons. This is uh, really nice to, to see. Um, there are the pros. I think as a package it's quite good value. We've got the matte screen, really good, good quality, full HD resolution, SSD and, H, uh, SSD and hard drive 
a real advantage because you've got that access port at the bottom. You can swap those out. That gives you, in one or two years' time, the ability to upgrade the storage or uh, the speed of that SSD. AC Wi-Fi in here, no problems there. No display port, no backlit keyboard. Uh, the interface positioning to the front, it's a little bit plasticky, it's a little bit heavy. Thousand euros is a lot of money, but I think the actual package here is, is, is fair and certainly worth looking at. If you're looking for something that's going to be entry-level gaming, entertainment, office, uh, work, school work, that sort of stuff, dorm room. This is a great one for a dorm room. You know, when you get a 17-inch uh, laptop, you, may, you want that screen to be good. If it's a 13-inch laptop, it's, too, it's small enough to put on the side and put a big screen next to it. But this is a 17-inch laptop, and you want that screen to be good quality. It is good quality. So, well done, Acer. Could have been IPS, but it could have been a lot more things as well, which would have taken the price up as well. So Acer's latest 7-inch multimedia office all-rounder with that USB 3 port. It's not USB-C, don't uh, uh, forget that. Uh, the GeForce 940MX inside with GDDR, GDDR5 RAM as well. So that's quite a nice combination. Um, check out the full review. There's a massive, massive load of details from, uh, by my colleague Sasha there on the gaming uh, details and details of the graphics internals there. Uh, we've also got some internal views and of course a load more of our lab tests. So if you got anything out of this video, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tune into the next video. My name's Chippy. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.